In this video, I'm going to show you how to make these two simple styles of health bars. So one that slides down like this and one that scrolls down in a wheel style like this as well. If you like the content and want to see more, please hit the like and subscribe button and let's jump right into this. To start out, I just have two white images that I made in paint.net. So if you're not good with graphic software, I included a link to get both of these below. But all they are is one is a square image of just pure white and the other one is just a white circle. And we're going to use those to create our health bars. So if you don't want to make your own or download any, just click the links below and you can get these exact files. To get started, let's right click in the hierarchy and create a new canvas. And we can just leave it named canvas. But there's one setting I want to change first. Under the scaler, where it says constant pixel size, let's change this to scale with screen size. And that way these health bars will always stay the same size and position, no matter how, how we resize or change the aspect ratio on our screen. So in the resolution for the reference, well, let's set it to 1080p. So 1920 by 1080. Now right click on the canvas in the hierarchy and let's create an empty game object here and call it health bar. This is just going to be a container to hold all the objects related to our health bar. And just to make it easier to work with the UI, I'm going to change the scene display to 2D. I'm just going to zoom out enough so I can see the whole canvas on the screen. Now I'm going to right click on the health bar and create a new UI image. And then I'm just going to name this to be background. Now in our background image, when we select it inside the source image, we want to drag in our blank square here, but you notice it won't let us. So that's because I'm set as a 3D project. We need to select the sprite. And then in the texture type, let's change this to be sprite 2D and UI, and then click apply. And let's do that to the circle as well. If you were working in a 2D project, that's already going to be done for you. So now we can drag in the white square and you're going to see it in there now. Select the health bar game object now, and let's just move that whole object into the top left corner of the screen. Now what we want to do with our health bar selected, not the background, we want to scale this to the size we want the health bar. So you're going to see the, the image isn't moving to the size yet. Don't worry about that. Just resize the health bar transform to be where you want it. So right about there looks good. Now we need to set its anchors. So keep the health bar selected and over in the inspector under anchors, click on it. And we want to click the top left corner one. So what that'll do is that's going to make sure the health bar is always anchored to the top left corner of the screen. So as you resize your window in your game, it's always going to stay in the top left. So now we have that set, we can move on. And let's select the background now. And because we already set the size of the parent, the health bar object, we know the size we want it to be. So if we click on these anchors, you can see if you hold Alt, it's also going to set the position. So we want to hold Alt and then use the stretch option. So we want the stretch on the horizontal and the vertical. So if we click on this one, it's going to stretch our image to match those anchor points of our parent, which is the health bar object. Now we have our background. So what we want to do is select background and hit control D to duplicate it. And let's rename this to fill. To make it so we can actually see a difference, I'm going to select the background and just change the color to be black. And now I'll select the fill and let's set this one to be green. Now in the inspector for the fill, I'm going to set the left, top, right and bottom to be two. And this is going to shrink it in a bit so you can actually see the background behind it. So now if we look, you see the black border around it, which is the background showing behind. If you look at the image component on our fill object, you're going to see an image type option and it's currently set to simple. We want to click that and select filled. And now for the fill method, we want to make sure that's set to horizontal. Fill origins leave as left. And now we can use this fill amount and actually change how much is filled. So if we click and start dragging, you're going to see the percentage changes. It goes from zero to one or zero to a hundred percent. Now all we need to do is access this fill amount via code. So I'm just going to create a capsule and use that as my player. I'm just going to name them player. 
reset his position, and if you look in the game view, you're going to see him there, but we're not going to make him do anything. He's just a placeholder. On that player, let's add a new component, and we'll add a script of player controller, and then just open that up. Because we're going to be working with those components of type image, we need to add using Unity Engine.UI so we can access any UI components. I'm going to use Serialize Field and make a private image component. We're going to call it Health Bar. And the reason I'm using Serialize Field, there's no need to make this public. We don't have to access this from other scripts, so it's best to keep it private. But we're going to drag and drop it in the inspector, so we need to use Serialize Field to do that. Let's hop back to Unity now and drag that in so we don't forget to do it later. So let's select our player and in that health bar, drag in the fill. And then what we're going to do is use that reference to access this fill amount and change it. Now let's make our health variables. So I'm going to use floats. You could make these ints. Either way works fine. I'm just using float here. So I'm going to make a max health value. I'm going to set that to 250. And then I'm also going to make a current health. Whenever the game starts, we want to be full health. So inside of start, let's just do current health equals max health. Let's also make a method and I'm just going to make it private and call it update health. And you can call this anything you want. This is the method that's going to tell the UI to update that health bar amount. So you could call it update health bar, whichever you want. Now to actually test it and use it in update, I'm just going to make an if statement and I'm going to look for a keyboard press on the space key. So I'm just going to do if input dot get key down key code dot space. And then this is where we're going to actually change the health bar. So in here, let's do current health minus equal 15. And then I'm just going to call update health. So it updates the display. And thinking back on it, it probably does make more sense to rename that method to update health bar. So I'm just going to change that. Now all we have to do to actually update the health bar is just type health bar dot fill amount. And now we're going to change that fill amount value. And what we need to assign it is just current health divided by max health. And that's going to actually give us the percentage of our max health that we have right now. A good thing to do as well in start when we set our current health, Let's update the health bar there as well. That way, if we don't have it set right in the inspector, you're not going to see the game start with a partially filled health bar. This way, it'll always be full on start. Just to demonstrate that working in the inspector, I'm going to set the fill amount value halfway here, or close to halfway. And now if we run our game, you're going to see it's full. And if we start hitting the space key, our health bar is going to go down each time we hit it. So now we have a working health bar. So now let's take this exact same concept that we used and let's make it into a circle radial menu. That's something that could be handy to use for a stamina bar or a mana bar, anything you want to see in a, a circle instead of just a slider like this. And to show how similar this actually is, let's actually just select the health bar, hit control D to duplicate and let's call it mana bar or mana wheel. And we're just going to modify that existing one. Let's drag it down below our health bar. And now let's select the background. And for the image, instead of the white square, let's drag in the circle. Now select fill and do the same thing. Just drag in the white circle. And you're going to notice the circles look odd. It's not the right shape or anything here. So to fix this, let's select both the background and the fill. And then I'm going to hit the set native size button. And this is going to set the both circles to the native size of the image. So now the aspect ratio and the size is correct. And we can just select them both and scale it down to whatever size we want it to be. Then select the fill object. And where you see fill method, let's set this to radial 360. So you can see there's a few different types of radials as well as vertical, which vertical would just fill from the top to the bottom and bottom to the top. So let's set radial 360 and fill origin set to the top. So now you can kind of see it's working. If we slide it back and forth, we're getting the values filling. It's almost like a pie chart. Since we're saying it's for mana in this example, let's set the color to a blue. Usually you want a light blue for a mana. Like we did with the health bar, let's select the background. And for the width and the height, just add 50 on here. So I'm going to add 50 to the width and then 50 to the height, 
And I'll give it a nice little black background outline around it. The fill itself works the exact same way as our health bar, except you'll notice if we play around with it a bit here, it looks like it's backwards. Usually you want it the other way. So let's uncheck clockwise and then try it again. Now we're going to see it'll actually fill the way we want where at the end you have a little bit of mana left and then you're just about out. So th this is preference, but this is the way you usually see it in most games. Now for the code, it's going to be identical. So let's just copy the health bar line and change that to be mana wheel. Next, I'll copy the health values and we're just going to rename these to be max mana. I'll set that to 100 and then we'll rename the other to be current mana. Copy the update health bar method as well. And we're just going to rename it to update mana wheel. Replace health bar with mana wheel and then current health and max health with the two mana values. In start, we'll do the same thing. So update mana wheel. And then for the testing and update, we'll just copy this method. And you can use any key you want. I'm just going to use keycode.c and just change these values as well. So we'll do current mana. I'm just going to minus equal five in this case. And then we'll change update health bar to update mana wheel. And that should be it. So let's go back to Unity and run it. And we actually got an error because we forgot to drag in our fill value. So let's select our player. And for the mana fill, we just need to drag fill from mana into that slot. And now we can run our game again. And when we run our game, we notice the mana bar is just black again. And that's actually because we forgot to set current mana equal to max mana in start. So let's just go and do that. Otherwise our mana is always going to be zero. And let's run our game again. And now everything's working fine. So now when we run it, every time I hit space, we're losing some health. And then every time I hit C, we're losing some mana. And that's all there is to it. So you have two different types of health bars working now. So I hope that helped you a lot there. I'll be making another video shortly showing how you can do the same thing and use these health bars in world space. So then the health bars actually follow around your characters in the game. So stay tuned, that should be out soon.